Hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to have a go at making a decorative archway. So this kind of thing. And while you could probably use something like this as a piece of regular scatter terrain, my main reason for making these is to be able to join two rooms together. So if I just turn that upside down, you can see that there is a one inch gap in the bottom, and that should fit over the top of the adjoining walls of these two rooms, like so. And now we have a single room with a series of pillars and archways running along the centre. So yeah, that's the idea. Anyway, as always, the PDF file containing all of these new textures can be found down in the description, so let's get started. Okay then, the first thing we'll need to do is to take this template here and decide on how many arches we're going to make. And since each archway is two inches wide, by default, this one will span a tile that's six squares wide. Though, you can of course trim this down to make a smaller arch, or you can stick a couple of them side by side to make a much larger one. Anyway, in this instance, I'm making one that's six squares wide, and uh, the next step is to glue this template to a piece of foam core, or similar. Then, once that's dry, we can cut that to size with a sharp knife. Now, the arches, they are a little bit trickier, but we just need to take our time and not worry too much about making them perfect. And, uh, and there you go, something like that. But to speed things up a little, here's one that I made earlier. Anyway, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera, but uh, as I say, don't worry if it's not super neat. Mine certainly isn't, but uh, we'll fix most of that in the next step. So, to do this, we'll take a piece of the plain stone texture, and we're going to be gluing that to the inside of a toilet roll tube, just to take advantage of the inner curve, so that we end up with something like this. Then, from that piece, we'll need to cut out several strips that are the same width as the foam core. So, in this instance, they're around 5mm wide. Next, we're going to glue one of these pieces to the inside of the arch, like you can see here. And there you go. Then we'll just need to trim off the end with a pair of scissors. And then we'll just repeat the process for all of the archways. Um, it's all fairly straightforward stuff, and you're not really going to be seeing much of this on the finished piece anyway, but uh, I think it's worth doing all the same. Anyway, when that's done, this is how it should look. Okay then, next we'll take the arch textures themselves, and glue those to some thin cardboard. And because it's just thin cardboard, these are a lot easier to cut out neatly. Though, I do want to point out that we can also cut out these little shapes, as we'll be using these later on. But yeah, now all we'll need to do is glue these to each side of the foam core. And, uh, as you can see, I'm just using a glue stick for this. And when we've done that, that's the main archway piece done. However, we are going to need to cover the top and the sides, so here I am measuring the combined width of the piece, which happens to be about a quarter of an inch, and uh, here's a strip of the plain stone texture that's been cut to the same size. Then, using the glue stick again, we're going to wrap that around the exposed edges of the foam core, which is exactly what you can see me doing here. And, uh, and there you go, that's how it should look. So, that's that done. Okay, next we're going to cut out a piece of foam core that's a half inch square, and a piece of the stone texture that's around one and a quarter inch. Then we can do the usual thing where we wrap the piece of foam core in the stone texture. Um, we've done this lots of times before. So, this is the kind of thing that we're aiming for. And we'll need to make two of those. There you go. Next we'll take a piece of this texture here, wrap that around a large drinking straw, and then cut that to size. Then it's just a matter of hot gluing the foam core pieces to either end of the straw to make a little pillar. It's, uh, it's really just a smaller version of the pillars that we made all the way back in episode 2. So uh, there you go, something like that. And if I bring back the archway piece, you can see that for this particular one we'll need to make a total of four of these. So. There you go. Then we'll just need to hot glue all of these into place. And uh, that's all I'm doing here. And when we're done, there's the finished archway. 
Though I do want to point out that we can add some extra decoration to these. So if we take the little diamond shape that you saw earlier, we can take that and glue it to the top of the arch, like so. Plus, I've also supplied some shield shapes that we can glue to some card, cut to size, and then bend around a pen to give them a slight curved shape. And we can hot glue those in the gaps between each arch. So, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's up to you if you use one or the other of these, or none at all, but as a quick comparison, here's the arches without them, and here's the example that you saw at the beginning of the video with everything glued into place. So, as I say, it's up to you. Now, before we make the base, I just want to quickly talk about making the steps, as ideally, we'll need to find some cardboard that we can stack one on top of the other so that it matches the height of the 2.5D walls. For example, I have this stuff, which if I stack three high, is roughly the same height, or there's regular corrugated cardboard, which only needs to be stacked too high. So it really does depend on what kind of cardboard you've got to hand, but uh, for my own steps, I'm going to use this one here. So uh, there'll be three steps upon either side of the arch that I'm making. Okay, now, as far as the base goes, you'll notice that there's one with a hex pattern and one with a rectangular pattern. And this is because the hex pattern works best on tiles with an even number of squares, whereas the rectangular one works better on those with an odd number of squares. For example, to connect two tiles together that are both 5 inches wide, we can simply make a base with 5 rectangles, and then, when we stick the bases of the pillars to the middle of these squares, we'll still have a full square between them for the models to move through. However, that's not going to work so well for tiles with an even number of squares. So, for a tile with six squares, for example, you'll notice that it's the kind of partial hexes along the edge of the strip. Um, it's actually these that align with the square grid of the regular tiles. And if I just show where the pillar bases go, you'll see that these overhang the edges slightly. So, we'll actually need to cut out a shape that looks something like this. Um, it looks a bit more complicated than it actually is, but uh, it's basically just a 6 inch long strip with a little extra piece on either side to allow for the overhanging half of the pillar base. So if I just show the position of the pillars again, you can see that by offsetting the grid with a simple hex tile, we still have a whole square, well, a whole hex really, for the models to move through. And just to clarify, if we were trying to do the same thing with a regular grid, we'd end up with the pillars sitting between two squares. So you could still only really fit one model between them, despite it looking like two grid squares. Um, anyway, I hope that all made some kind of sense. So with all of that in mind, here's the base that I've made for this one, which I've just glued to the same cardboard as I'll be using for the steps. So here's the archway, and uh, I'll just quickly mark the tiles where I'll be gluing the pillars, so that I don't mess up at this late stage, and, uh, and then we can apply some hot glue to the centre of those tiles, and glue the arch into place. And there you go, that's what it should look like. Okay, so we've already established that I'll be making three steps. So if you're confident with your measurements, you could make one that's one inch wide, one that's three quarters of an inch wide, and one that's a half inch wide. However, I'm gonna play it safe and, uh, and give myself a bit of clearance by cutting them around one, maybe one and a half millimeter short. So. Uh, more like the measurements that you can see here. Then we can simply glue them one on top of the other, just using the glue stick, so that we end up with this kind of thing. And uh, we will need to make two of those, one for each side. Now, it's difficult to see on camera, but I've actually drawn a faint pencil line a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the top step, as this is where I'm going to glue the base. So here I am running a line of hot glue along the edge of the first piece, and sticking the base on top, and then doing the same thing with the other side. And there's our finished archway. And if I turn it to the side, you can see the little slot that's hopefully going to cover the walls. Now for the moment of truth. So here's two six inch wide tiles, and if everything's gone according to plan, this should be a nice snug fit on top of the wall, which it is. So there you go. Um, this isn't the best of camera angles, so here's a picture instead, and as you can see, just by making a couple of these, we can really change the look and the layout of our dungeons without the need to make any new tiles. And just to show another example, here's one that's been made to connect a couple of 5 inch wide rooms. So yeah, 
That's it for another episode. Um, this one has been a little bit more involved than my usual stuff, but uh, I kind of like the end result. Anyway, I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you think of these down in the comments. So, thanks again, and bye for now. <laughs>